Hi everybody, I'm Belinda Wasser and uh, I'm very excited. Today we're going to talk about is being a virtual assistant for you. I know um, there are a lot of you out there in our over 13,000 member community that just happened yesterday that we went over the 13,000 mark, which is very exciting. But I know a lot of you are thinking about, you know, is this for me? Is this valuable? Um, can I make a living? How much can I charge? You know, you're thinking a million things, have a lot of questions. And so today I really want to go deep into those answers. Um, you know, really listen to your questions and find out where you are and where, you know, whether or not this is for you. So we're going to do that today. So as you join, just put where you are in the comments in terms of where you are in your journey and where you are in the world. Cause I'd love to hear um, our VA connection group is um, like I said a second ago, it um, has surpassed 13,000 members and at last count 47 countries. It's probably time to count the countries up again um, to find out how many there are exactly. But it is a great topic. It's a, and it's a good question. You know, um, the world has changed so much in the last year. I think more than ever, it supports working virtually and, you know, having your own business. So I'm going to dive in. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself for the, a couple of minutes um, because we have, we're streaming across Periscope and um, YouTube and, you know, three places on Facebook because I want to make sure everybody um, knows who I am because there might definitely be some new people in the crowd. So my, like I said, my name is Belinda Wasser and this is my little daughter here, um, Emily. And this was 10 years ago from, oh, there's someone here from South Africa. Hello, that's awesome. We have a member of our VIP club from South Africa. Uh, that's cool. When I was a little girl, my dad went there for work. So I have some um, jewelry uh, from South Africa, believe it or not. Um, so this is me and my little girl and Emily who is going to be 20 in two months. And I did not start my VA business in the best time of my life. And, and the reason I bring that up is because I know a lot of people are waiting for, you know, just the right moment to start their VA business. And I'm not sure there is an exact right moment. For me, I was um, newly divorced, single mom. And that wasn't, that wasn't the, the biggest issue, the biggest issue was that I hadn't been able to pay my mortgage for over a year. So that meant we needed to move. I, uh, creditors calling me, I stopped even answering my phone because they wanted to know when the next payment was. And I didn't have an answer. And I, I, this was new to me. I had always taken care, been, you know, I, I had always worked and um, my finances were straightened out straight, but things got out of hand. And um, anyway, that's what happened. And it's so difficult when that happens because it feels like a load of bricks on your chest. Like you can't move everywhere. I looked, there was a mess to clean up and I didn't know what to do first. And I didn't know what to do next. I, um, I knew that I had to figure it out though, mostly because I had been in it and that was my last job. And I knew I couldn't go back to it with this, with this little girl. I wanted to be your mom more than anything. And I wanted to have a good relationship with her and IT, for any of you who have been in it, it's a lot of, you know, last minute going into the office, staying late, going in early. You really don't have a lot of control over your life. So I thought, you know, I've been an administrator, a secretary back in the dark ages, and I always liked that work. I liked it a lot. I felt like I was pretty good at it. I like checking things off, figuring things out. And so I thought, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to try that. So I tempt for a little bit, realized I couldn't make any serious money as a temp. Um, so I thought I'm going to try to go off on my own. And, and a couple of my friends encouraged me to do that. I didn't know about virtual assistants yet. I had no idea. Um, so I started telling everyone and at the school bus stop one morning, shortly thereafter, I told one of the dads and I said, Hey, you know, I'm doing this. And he said, Oh my gosh, I'm starting a new business. I could totally use you. And he hired me to pay his bills to buy computers, install software, you know, things that I already knew how to do. And I was so relieved because the world was, you know, really turning to the internet. And I was afraid that, that I wasn't going to have the skills that I needed, but that wasn't the case at all. My second client I met at a, um, a wedding reception. 
I met him. I, I had heard of him before. So I introduced myself to him, told him what I was up to, connected with him on LinkedIn. And then a I think it was a couple of weeks later, he contacted me and said, hey, can you help me with this event at Constant Contact? He was speaking there and, and I said, sure. And it was, you know, taking event registrations. I think we used Eventbrite and um, going to the event, selling books, his book in the back of the room, you know, handing out the handouts. Maybe I even made the handout. I don't remember. Um, but after that, we talked and said, you know, this was a physical in-person event. I bet a lot of people could benefit from this and we could sell, sell the webinar if we, um, if, if we turned it into a webinar. So we did. He paid me to figure it out and we did that together. And then after that, I got more exposure because of the webinars and people started to, um, people started to referrals started coming in from his clients and from people who had were on the webinars and, and other places in my life. And my business took off. It really took off. And the thing that's great about it is I've been in business now for 10 years. It'll be 11 years this summer, which is amazing. And um, I've worked with over 200 clients. So that's been really exciting too, to see inside all of those businesses and learn as I've gone you know, through them and help them. It's been really exciting. And um, the thing that was shocking to me was that I made over a million dollars in revenue during those 10 years. And for the most part, I was sitting, you know, in a little nook in the bedroom or in the, uh, you know, the bay window of the dining room. Um, most of the time, my working space was not that much wider than my desk. And um, I have an office now because we are, at least for now, empty nesters. And so I took, um, the, we have a little better, we call it the middle bedroom because it's between the kitchen and the and our bedroom. And uh, and that's where I, where I am. And I love it. I have a door for the first time. But my first million dollars I made without a door or, um, you know, a fancy desk or anything like that. So you can definitely, you can definitely do it too. And now here's what it looks like. This is my fiance. We're getting married this summer. Uh, Greg, who have been with for a long time. And this is Emily last summer as well. Um, and uh, one of my friends said to me a couple of years ago, after I moved here, I, I lived in Boston and I'm, I moved to Connecticut because I could, you know, I work virtually and I could just literally pick myself up, missed half a day of work. And, you know, I, I was just back in, you know, back in the saddle, as they say, um, because of the virtual nature of, of our work and because all of my information lives in the cloud and my work is in the cloud, it was very simple for me to move back, you know, to move here. Um, but she said to me, if I would have told you, you know, back even a year ago that you were going to move to Connecticut, find this fabulous man, your daughter was going to be thriving, you know, your business um, was going to be off the charts and, you know, everything was going to turn around. I would have told her she was crazy and to stop teasing me. And I, I think mostly because I, because of what, what happened and the place that I got to, I just thought I was at an age where I was just, struggle was just how it was going to go. You know, there wasn't going to be some big epiphany. I, I had sort of made my bed and I was going to have to lie in it. And, and I didn't, I didn't really believe that it could change, but it, it did, it did incrementally, it changed. And um, here I am now, like I said, in business for 10 years. I also have a, um, a community that I started two years ago. Um, it's called the VA Connection, and many of you know about it. Um, it's a, an online community. It's on Facebook. Um, I mentioned earlier, if you're just popping in, that we um, have 13,000 members. There are lots of videos available like this one um, and many others. There, are, There is um, a website, theVAConnection.com, with, gosh, I think 120 blog posts, lots of information specifically about starting a VA business. So I invite you to come over there and join us. And we're also on, on Instagram at the Virtual Assistant Connection um, if you want to check us out there. All right, so let's get everybody on the same playing field here and talk about what is a virtual assistant. So a virtual assistant provides administrative, technical, or creative assistance to clients. So administrative, technical, or creative. It could also be bookkeeping. And the reason I, I want to really shine a light on that is that I think a lot of people think a VA has to have a certain skill set. You know, they have to know how to do click funnels or launch, um, 
what, what are those summits or do online courses or something like that. And it's really not true. You can do anything administrative, technical or creative. And like I said, bookkeeping falls into that too. The main difference is that instead of doing it for one person or organization, we work virtually and usually have, you know, many clients and, and, you know, we just, we work from home. So that's really the big thing. Hey, Lisa, Lisa's joining us. Hello, hello, hello. Thanks for coming in that pretty picture. So, so that's the, that's the primary piece there. Okay. So as we jump in, here is how today is going to go. I've reached into my experience and pulled out seven questions that I think people ask um, on an ongoing basis. They ask me these questions. And what we're going to do is we're going to dive in really deep on these questions, as deep as you want to go. There's no nothing that's off limits. So just, you know, interrupt me during the presentation and um, drop your thoughts in the, in the comments. That would be great. So here's what we're going to talk about. Are you ready to work on your own? What do you need to get started? Where do I get clients? How much money can I earn? What training is required? Can I work part-time? And who hires VAs? So those are the questions that I came up with and we'll either get to all of them or we won't depending on your questions and you know where you all wanna take this. My goal today is for you to get your questions answered. Okay, so let's jump in. Okay. So the first question is, are you ready to work on your own? Now, having your own business uh, is very different from having a job. And the main question is, do you wanna be a business owner? Because being a VA, it's, it's, more, than, it's more than being someone's helper, if you wanna be successful. It's thinking about, okay, I need a business bank account. You know, I need a, a dedicated place to sit. I need to do marketing. I need to get business cards. I need, you know, really thinking about how you want to structure your days, who you want to work with, what kind of work you want to do, thinking about new skills you want to acquire. So it's not, it's not like, you know, you with the job, there are definitely opportunities for, you know, learning and growing and all of those things, absolutely. But this is self-guided. So this is not, you know, your boss, you know, putting his arm around you or, you know, her arm around you and saying, you know, I, I want to give you a promotion. It's time for a raise. You know, it's, you have to figure out your pricing. You have to increase your pricing. You, know, you have to figure out these pieces and really sit in the seat of a business owner. So that's the first question that, that I think is really important to answer. The second one is, are you self-guided? I don't have any trouble 99% of the time getting up out of bed, you know, pulling myself together and sitting at my desk and figuring out what my priorities are. What do I need to handle? What am I going to do next? How long am I going to sit in my seat? Um, so really being self-guided is, is a critical piece because again, no one, you know, there's no one watching you and, uh, and it, you have to have, be in your seat a certain amount of hours, you know, to reach whatever revenue goal you've set for yourself. So you do, need to be self-guided. And then, you know, this is an interesting question because when I first started out as a VA, I thought about risk and I thought about, I, I used to doubt my decision and I would, because everyone around me had a job, everybody. And I would think, what am I doing? Are you crazy? You know, there's no 401k. Well, you can get a 401k actually. Um, you know, there's no health benefits. And then, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but, but there's, there, there are risks that are definitely there when you're when you go out on your own. You have to, you know, you have to generate the revenue. You have to generate the work. However, I have seen so many people, even before the pandemic, lose their job like that. You know, it's it's gone, and it's what I call a single point of failure. One person in a company decides that they don't need you to be there anymore, and you're not, and that's it. However, by having as many clients as I do you know, it would be a sad day if half of them went away. However, I could still pay the rent, you know? So it's it's important to think about how you see risk, you know, because you might have a, a nice steady job and you think everything's going well, and then maybe it's not. So, you know, you do have to, if it's going to go smoothly and you're not going to be doubting your decision all the time, um, you know, you have to look at how you feel about risk, okay? 
that's important. So in order to get started, everyone needs a lot less than they think. You know, it's kind of like when I had Emily, um, she was, I knew she was going to be my only baby for a bunch of reasons. And, um, and she, you know, she, I was 40 when I had her. So I, and I had some disposable income back then. So she had the most beautiful crib and she had the changing table and the giant teddy bear and, you know, all the stuff. And when she came, all of her little dresses were, you know, washed and hanging in the closet and I was completely prepared. And now I realized that what I really needed was, um, you know, I, she didn't need a crib because she slept with me. <laughs> she, um, she didn't even spend any time in her crib. I probably changed the sheets twice. Um, you know, the big fancy changing table is nice, but you know, there was a lot of things. We needed the rocker, you know, the glider for sure. Um, but there was a lot of things that I didn't need and having a business as a VA is kind of like that. So you definitely need a dedicated workspace. You need some place to sit, you know, with a, a computer that is reliable. Um, you don't need to get started a website. Um, you don't need, you, you just don't need a lot of stuff. When I had those first two clients, I was, well, the first one I was working on his computer. The second one I was working on my computer, um, but I had a cell phone. I had Microsoft Office. That was kind of it. You know, I, I, I didn't have, I didn't have all of the tools. I had a notebook. I, I wrote stuff down with a pen, you know, so you really, but you do need a dedicated workspace because you don't want to be in a place where you have to pick your work up all the time and you have to settle back down. You know, even like I said, when I first started out, I'm trying to remember when I very first started out, I, um, I took a corner in the living room and then because we had, it was a Victorian brownstone kind of thing. And there was one room that just, it was sort of like the room you used for Christmas. So I took that room over. Um, and I was able to work in there without moving anything. And then when I moved out of that place, um, I was in a bay window of a dining room. So I wasn't entertaining really at the time, but even if I was, I could straighten my desk up and leave it in the dining room and that was okay. I was in the nook of the living room um, in another place. And then part of our bedroom when I first moved here until I um, took over the, the middle bedroom. So you just, but it, but it needs to be so you can step away and walk, you know, walk right back into it. Um, you need to be able to uh, be articulate about what you do. Um, we're going to have, I'm working on it right now. We're going to have what's going to be called the VA Client Kickstart Challenge. It's going to be June 14th. And I'm going to teach everybody how to get clients. And a big piece of that is to how to be articulate about what you do. And we're going to spend a whole hour just talking about that. So you need to be able to, when someone says, what do you do for work? You need to be able to explain it in a way that they know what you're talking about. You know, we've all been to networking events where we, you know, we hear some guy who's got a job and he's like, I'm the vice president of the division of the whatever. I have no idea what you're talking about. You know, they use this like really jargony language and you're not clear. So you need to get clear. And there are lots of resources in the VA Connection about that. If you look over in the big group on the VA Connection under guides, you'll see all kinds of videos and blog posts. Um, just look in there and search on... Um, how to get clients. I just was looking at the video this morning specifically on that. And a big part of it is to, have, is to be articulate. All right. Clear about your pricing. It's so important to be clear about your pricing because there's, and there's lots of, I have lots of webinars about that too. The first thing, and probably this, it's just like the secondary effect. The first thing is you confuse people you're trying to talk to. The second is you stress yourself out all the time. And I know this because for the per first two years of my business, that's what I did. You know, I would, I did flat rate pricing back then and someone would ask me a question and, um, they, um, they, they would, sorry, I just got a text and I'm looking at them cause they're Facebook messages. <laughs> I want to make sure everything's okay with this live. Um, so, so you, so what I would do is I would, um, I would, I did flat rate in the beginning, which I no longer do. And, you know, I would define the pro project and I would figure out the, um, the price and I'd get on the phone and I'd say the price and then I would just want to die, you know, and I would worry about it and they would say, I'll get back to you. Or I emailed it to them and I'd be wringing my hands and figure, you know, just obsessing about it. So um, we definitely can stress ourselves out, but the client gets stressed out too, because, 
because if we're not clear, um, they're thinking, is she really in business? You know, what's the deal with this? Can, is she reliable? Because we're not, we're not giving confidence in our pricing. It's one of the most important things, um, you know, to, to getting started. So these three things are the things that I think are really important. The rest of it you can figure out. You know, you can download Trello later. You can figure out how to set up, you know, your filing structure later. You know, you can figure out what your project management software is going to be, or if you're going to be in an LLC, you can figure all that out. But to get started and to get the money rolling in, that's, those are the things that you need. Clients are everywhere. They are everywhere. And I, I mean, I, if you think about it, my first two, the first one I found at the school bus stop, and it wasn't a special school bus stop. <laughs> you know, everybody else had a job there. Um, and the, um, and the wedding, you know, that's completely random that I was even at that wedding. So, and I found clients in really strange places like, um, oh my gosh, people. So one of my most recent clients, I, I, when someone tells me I need to talk to someone, I always try to make that happen because I figure, all right, if someone is saying, you know, you two should meet, let's do it. So I'll get on a zoom or a phone call and it's, and it's been going on for years and it happens with, you know, people all over the country and a woman, um, I talked to in 2015, I didn't even remember, but a client came, John, and he said, you know, Wendy told me about you and that you were really good and I want to hire you. I told him, you know, we talked for a few minutes, we decided to work together. And I'm thinking, Wendy, 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 who's Wendy? So I, I, you know, searched in my Gmail and there she was. And I could see, you know, we had met and we had talked and, you know, everything that happened. And, and, and that's the, the track. One of my biggest clients, how he came was I was, he was a web developer in the Midwest and I was working on a project for Nick and Nick used David. David was the web, de web developer and I was really impressed by him. And I thought, you know, I want to check him out. Maybe we can collaborate in the future because when I, I, we were moving Nick off of a platform onto something else and David was like right on it. And I could tell this is a smart guy. So I said to him when the project was over, I emailed him and said, hey, let's just spend a few minutes on the phone. You know, we were working on Nick's project, but I want to find out about your business and I want to tell you about mine. And we had that conversation and we realized we're never going to collaborate. We, we were just, it was sort of a fluke that we were both on the same project because our skill sets were very similar. And, um, and so we, you know, great, nice to meet you. And then I don't know how long it was, but a while, all of a sudden this guy comes into my inbox, you know, David told me about you. I want to talk to you. And this is someone that has consistently bought three to four debit cards a month for years. That is a big, so for those of you who don't know what a debit card is, he's buying three or four chunks of 10 hours of my time at $900 each, you know, at every month. That's, that's considerable. Um, and that was from this conversation because David, you know, when the client went to David and said, um, you know, can you do this work for me? Or do you know someone? David said, oh yeah, no, I don't do that. But Belinda does. And I've met, worked with her and you should go talk to her. And he did. And that's how that happened. So you really never know. There's not some like secret place that you have to find the, you know, the key. And as soon as you unlock it, I've never found a client on Facebook in a VA Facebook group. I, I don't, unless you're having huge success, I don't recommend it. Referrals are really the best, the best way to go. And I have something that's called the sprinkling method. And it's, it's what it really is, is relationship market and marketing. So it's, you know, and you can read a lot about that, but essentially sprinkling, because I feel like it's like confetti, you know, like you're throwing yourself out there, like, here's my newsletter, here's a card, here's a this, here's a that, you know, and meeting people at weddings and wherever and not being afraid to say, well, what do you do? And then, you know, me telling them really clearly and concisely what I do. So the sprinkling method, which I talk a lot about in the Facebook group, is really a systematic way to keep in touch with the people you already know so that they can refer you or they can hire you later and so that you're top of mind. And the example that I, I use a lot is I think about when someone asks me, um, do you have a dentist you like? Well, I totally love my dentist. I have had so many dentists that I don't like. I have a whole thing about the dentist. But Dr. David Stebbins, I love him. I love him. I have sent probably 10 people to him. 
and our whole family goes to him and that's a lot of people. Uh, he's terrific. I like him because he's professional. He treats it like a business. He's not, you know, like a lot of doctors, they're like, I'm a doctor. I don't know how much that costs. You ask him how much something costs and he's like, let me find out or $1,200, you know, and, and he'll, he talks to you because those are financial decisions too. You know, what, when you're deciding when to get the crown you need. Um, so anyway, my point is when someone says to me, who's your dentist? Do you like your dentist? I say, yes, I love him. Now here's what else happens. Two friends are sitting at, you know, in a cafe or outside or on the phone. And one of them is complaining, complaining, complaining about, you know, they have so much to do. They can't get out from under it. You know, it's terrible. And the other person says, you should talk to Belinda. She can help you. I'm not even in the room, not even in the room, but I did my job sprinkling by letting people know what I do in a way that they can remember. So I hope that's resonating with you because getting clients isn't hard, but if you can talk about your prices clearly and you can articulate what you do. And there's a, a lot to that um, that we're gonna get into when we do the VA Client Kickstart Challenge. I'm gonna be very specific with how to do that. So you're gonna be able to uh, you know, get clients, absolutely. And I'm going to pause for just a second um, to see if there are any questions. I know there's a little delay. Okay. Jump in anytime. All right. So let's talk about how much money you can earn. This is a very interesting question because um, it doesn't matter where you live kind of doesn't really matter a huge amount what your skills are. I mean, if there's a baseline, definitely. Um, but it it's it's mostly depends on your skills and your confidence. That's mostly what it depends on. Hold on, I want to see. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to see how many bullets there were to make sure I'm in the right spot. So the reason I say it depends on your skills and your confidence, um, when I started out, I decided that when I was in corporate, which was, you know, a few years before I went out on my own, I was making about $100,000. It's like $114,000, 104, I don't remember. So something like that. I think it was 104. And that's roughly $50 an hour. And I thought, okay, so the marketplace, you know, the workforce has determined that I earn $100,000. And I had earned at least that much for a while. So it wasn't like, I, you know, I got the job and got laid off. And then I thought, well, maybe that didn't work out. I, that wasn't it at all. I'd made that much money for a while. I got laid off because of 9-11. Um, and all the, all of our clients in this firm that I worked in were like United Airlines, you know, <laughs> like nobody was flying and everything changed. So, so that was fine. But um, I just decided that $50 an hour, I didn't know that people were working for less. I didn't really know any virtual assistants. It was 10, almost 11 years ago. There, there weren't so many all over the place like there are now. Facebook wasn't like it was is now, um, or LinkedIn. And so, um, so I just started with that. And everybody, you know, every, not everybody thought that was a great price, but enough people did. And I started to, you know, I started to get some traction with that. And then I, um, so let's talk about my, my skills. So I'm really good at figuring stuff out. And that is the primary skill. I also knew constant contact enough to set up someone's newsletter. And I knew Microsoft Word and, you know, Office. Like I knew, I was not a PowerPoint wizard. I'm much better at PowerPoint now than I was then, much better. Like I didn't know about the Slide Master, if that's a big deal. But, um, but I could do, you know, PowerPoints for people. Um, I know Excel, not like pivot tables and things like that, but you know, I can, I, I know Excel well enough to do a little math um, and Word, you know, I know how to format documents and make things look nice, make them a PDF. I knew a little HTML because I had built an AOL dating myself website when my nephew was born um, to share pictures with the family, but I was not a like click funnel, you know, online course creating person, very more like administrative secretarial kind kinds of skills. So that's, that's why I say it depends on your confidence um, because you have to be able to say that number to somebody and then live through it, which it, it takes confidence. 
So I'll, I'll continue with what happened to me. So here's what I did. So I went out at $50 an hour and then I got probably 10 clients and I'm starting to feel now like, because it, it didn't happen overnight. Thank goodness. I wouldn't have been able to handle it, but you know, it happened over, I don't know, probably four months. So now I have 10 clients and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to raise my rate from 50 to 60. Now I'm quite sure while I'm doing this, that I'm never going to have another new client again. I didn't raise my rate on my old clients, my existing clients, I raised it on the new one. So, so my risk, cause I am, you know, I am, I take risks, but I'm, they're pretty um, calculated. So I thought, all right, I'll raise it on the next new person and see what happens. And they hired me and I thought, okay. And then a couple more hired me. And then I thought, Oh, $60 is fine. Okay. So then um, I got comfortable. Now I'm still getting paid $50 an hour and $60 an hour. So then I raised it to $70 an hour. And this kept going on until I got to $120 an hour. And I'm doing things like, uh, can you look at my PowerPoint and make sure it's okay? Not, can you write it? Can you make sure the logo's on it? Can you take these, all these different handouts from my course? the PowerPoint handouts or Word documents and make sure the logo's in the right place and they're all the same size. You know, th things that were they require attention and they require thinking, but it's not, you know, brain surgery or anything like that. Um, I did some calendaring. Um, I set up Zoom accounts for people when the pandemic hit. One of my clients said, we all need Zoom accounts. So she's paying me to set up Zoom accounts. You know, really not that high tech stuff. I can do some pretty high tech stuff, but that's not how I spend the majority of my time. And it's not the reason most people hire me. Um, the people who want me to do that strictly want me to do that. And it's not a large percentage of my income at all. Um, not at all. I, I spent three hours yesterday um, going through a spreadsheet and manually removing tags in MailChimp for someone. That's what he wanted me to do, you know, and there was no automated way to do that that I could come up with. So that's that's what I did. Or I'll, um, I learned how to add captions with a very specific tool that someone told me about to webinars. So I'll take a webinar and I'll listen to it, you know, s slowly and change the words that need to be changed. And I'm not an English major, you know, but I'm just making sure that the period's in the right place and the you know, the right words are capitalized and things like that. So lots of low tech ish things you can do and make a very good living. So what happened to me was I went all the way up to 120. And now I have clients because I didn't really think that I would ever get that high. And I didn't think it would happen that fast. So I kind of tripped on myself. And I, um, I had clients at $50, 60, 70, 75, 80, 90, 100 and 120. So now I'm like, it's a total mess. Um, so what I ended up doing was because the people at 120, even though I um, had 26 clients come on at that rate, they were not, I was making less money than I ever had because, because they weren't, they weren't asking me to do routine things. It was sort of, they wanted to pick my brain or, you know, bring me in for something special, but it wasn't, I wasn't being part of their team anymore. And I really miss that. So I lowered it to $100 an hour for people who buy five hours and $90 an hour if you buy 10 hours. And I evened everybody out and the $50 people I brought up, the 60, all of those to 90. And I do not recommend you doing it this way. I, it was a huge learning experience for me. But when I did that, I probably had 35 clients at the time, only two left and one, and, and two of them, they came back. They eventually retired, so I'm not working with them, but, um, it, it really, it, I did it carefully, very carefully, um, and one at a time in the order in which I did not, you know, want, I didn't care if they left or not. Um, but it, it was fascinating to see, you know, you really can charge a premium. And I want to tell you a story. I was, um, I'm launching a new course in June and I wanted to do research before I did, because I wanted to find out what's on people's minds. So I set up, um, 20 minute conversations with I don't know how many, it was like 25 people, something like that, people like all over the world. And we were talking and one of the women anecdotally said to me, I know I have to pay my dues. And without thinking, I said, no, you don't. She's like, what do you mean? I said, who are you paying them to? <laughs> you know? Like, there's no dues. You don't have to pay dues. There's no dues. You don't have to work for nothing or, you know, work for $20 an hour until you know what you're doing. You don't need to do that. 
you need to learn how to talk about what you do in a very clear way, figure out your price, and then do what I did, which is say it out loud 400,000 times. I used to walk around this pond in Boston and I would put my earbuds in so people didn't think I was insane. And I would say, um, practice people, you know, I pretend that the question was asked of me, you know, how much, how do you charge? And I'd say, it's really simple. Here's how it works. I have this thing, it's called the Rocket Girl debit card. People prepay my time in five or 10 hour chunks. Five hours is $100 an hour or $500. I do the math for them. No need to hide anything, right? Because this is the deal. 10 hours is $90 an hour or $900. The time is good for a year. I have some clients that buy a debit card every week. I have other clients that buy maybe two debit cards a year. And you can use it in any increment that you want. And then I stop talking. Stop talking. And then they're either in or they're not. And I don't talk them into it. Um, but that's really how that's really how it works. So I would practice that and practice that and practice that. And every time I raise my rate, I would have to practice it all over again. Because a big part of this game, it's not, I don't mean a game like pl pl game playing, but I mean like making this work is really what I mean, is not having your eye twitch or flinch or your or you're not sure what words to say. So I practice them so that if someone wakes me up in the middle of the night and says, how much do you charge? You know, I can say, boom, it's really simple. Um, this is how it works. <laughs> so that's, that's a big part of it too. So more than the number itself, it's being able to say the number with confidence that matters a lot. All right, any questions about how much money you can earn? And so the first year I made about $70,000 and I've made over a hundred thousand every year. What and the beautiful thing about this is you get to decide how much you want to earn. When I first moved to Connecticut, I didn't have any friends, and I had a lot of really good friends in Boston. So I wanted to go find my girls, and so I networked like nobody's business. And I was not trying to grow my business. What I was doing was looking for friends, and people that were so sweet. At the end of every meeting, they would say you know, how can I help you? And I would say, you know, remember my birthday, take me out to lunch, you know, like have coffee with me. Um, because I really, what I, my business was full when I moved here, but that year I ended up making something like 40,000 extra dollars, which is a lot. And it almost killed me because I like, I, it was so much work and I just kept saying yes. But I, like I said, it made a really lot of money, but it was because um, I went out and talked to people all the time because I networked so much. I was able to turn it up and I was able to learn that anytime I want to do that, I know what to do. You just go everywhere, tell everybody, you know, talk to people, no selling involved, no selling involved at all. Just being clear about talking about what you do and being clear about your pricing. Okay. Let's talk about training. Um, all right. So I told you that when I started, you know, I had very basic skills. The biggest skill was the figuring it out thing. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it's something that gets better over time. You know, if somebody asks me how to do something and I Google it, it's, it's very rare that uh, there's a few things I haven't been able to figure out, but, but not a lot. You just get good at Googling. That's the, you really, that's the skill. If you want to increase your skills, that's a good one to increase. Um, I do want to tell you about, um, I have something called the ultimate uh, virtual assistant money-making task list. If you go over to the, the VA connection with the word, the, the VA connection.com look right up at the top bar. There's, um, little banner and you can click that and it'll take you to a page where you can put your email address in and get a copy of that. It's a 12 page guide. It's all about what you can do right now to get started as a VA. You only need, you know, one service to start or two or three. You don't need to have a huge, you know, services page because you're going to pick stuff up as you go. Um, you definitely are going to pick stuff up as you go. But the, the main thing, is learning how to run a business. And that's a lot of what we talk about at the VA Connection. Sure, I can teach you how to use MailChimp, but I'd much rather teach you how to manage your books or how to fire a client or how to onboard a client. You know, the business of the business. And and that's that's where you, I really think the focus, you know, you should turn your focus when you're first starting out to make sure you get that bank account that you need to, you know, to not commingle your money. Um, that to me is more important than the, the client skills because a lot of them are either common sense or they're going to train you 
or you're going to figure it out. And I know that a lot of you that are listening either now or the replay do not believe me because I people ask me this all the time and then they look at me like I have three heads, but it's it really is true. It really is true. You know, learn one thing. Like if you want to learn constant contact, awesome. Then when someone comes to you and says, can you do mail or light? It's all, it's like the same thing. You know, there's a list, there's an email, there's a scheduling, you know, it, it's all the same component. So you're able to figure stuff out, you know, a, as you go. So that is what I, I'm saying about training. Now the um, question about working part-time comes up a lot. I've always worked full-time because I just needed to, I needed to make a full-time living, but you can definitely make a part-time living. What you need to do though, is consider the type of work. I have a client who, when, if, whenever he needs me, I'm pretty much right there. He has, an, I have an email address on his account. And when, um, when he sends me an email, it makes a sound. And I know I have three monitors and one of the monitors has a set of browser tabs with probably 10 different things that I'm monitoring for him. So throughout the day, I'm checking those things. And that would not be the right client for you because when he wants me, he, he wants me. And unless I've told him ahead of time, I'm not going to be here. He's expecting that I will be here. So you want to set expectations. So with that particular client, there were, I used to go to Boston one day a month and I would say to him, okay, this is the day I'm going to check your email in the morning. I'm going to check it at about two o'clock and then I'll check it again at the end of the day. And that might not be until the evening. So if you need me, call me. I'm not available to talk between 1145 and 215 because I was there hosting a lunch. Um, and so that worked great. But you have to be clear on the expectations. It's you can't be wiggly about it, you know, when people are depending on you because they, they um, trust is a huge part of being a VA. And a lot of people you hear stories and, and I think it's for various reasons that it didn't work out with the VA. I think the biggest um, cause of that is that the client didn't know how to delegate and the VA maybe didn't know how to, what I call reverse delegate. There's a whole article on my blog about reverse delegation. So check that out, you know, how you can make sure to help the client give you what you need. Um, but you, but you do need to, you do need to establish this trust and, and that you're dependable and that you're going to be there. And a consistent schedule does that as well. So I know I, I was talking to um, one of my clients who has um, another person working with her and part time and she felt and they used to work together, like in the same room. And then with the pandemic, they couldn't. And my client, her name is Barbara. She was very distraught. She was saying, I don't know when she's working. I don't know when she's not, you know, and, and she didn't know. You know, if I email her now, is she going to respond? Is she working? And it was driving her crazy. And so you don't want to create that kind of scenario. You want your client to know, you know, I work Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from noon until two. And that's going to help you too, because it'll help you be more productive. It'll help you to be, um, it, it'll just, it, it'll help your business to work better. Because I know for me, if it's something like I'm going to go for a walk four days a week, I decide that the first day I'm like, I think I'll walk tomorrow and then I'm not, you know, and then I walk the next day and then I think, well, I have three more times to go and there's four more days left. So I'll skip today. And before you know it, I'm not walking at all. But if I say I'm walking seven days a week, I, I did it for years. Right. And since I moved to Connecticut, I started saying, I'm going to do it five days a week. And it really doesn't, it doesn't work very well. So it's the same thing with the consistent schedule. It'll, it'll help you and it will help your clients. And then um, who hires VAs? It's, it's really, Anybody who understands what we do, there are very few people, you know, that are in business for themselves um, that don't need help in some capacity. So it's a small business owners, authors, financial planners, coaches, consultants, nutritionalists, real estate agents. And I've had VAs before. VAs are great. It's a good, great way to scale your business. You know, at one point I thought I wanted an agency. And so I hired a couple of VAs and, and, it was amazing, you know, and I decided I, I didn't want to have an agency. I wanted to do the VA connection instead, but, um, but I tried it out. And so having you being a VA and having a VA can be a really good thing because they can help you with client work. They can help you scale. They can, you know, you can leverage them and um, you can be the business owner and they can help with the client work. So these are the questions that we went over. I just, um, I want to take a couple of minutes to see, 
Is it, sorry, I'm having a phone malfunction here. Um, I just want to um, see if there's any more questions. There's a couple of people left here. Thanks for hanging out with me. And anybody that's watching the replay or watching on Periscope or YouTube, you know, just um, tag me and I'll be happy to answer your question. I love talking about this because it's just being a VA, I, I love it so much. It changed my life. It gave me a new confidence. It's like, you know, I don't want to say a purpose because I think that's, I don't know if, if it would align with that, but um, it it's given me, it really has given me confidence and it's put, helped me put my life in a good place again. So if you're wondering, what should I do next? Um, if you're not part of my free online classroom, go on over to Facebook, type in the virtual assistant connection, click the join button, and I'm happily going to welcome you. And then the other thing is um, sign up for my email newsletter. Just go to the VA connection. You'll see a big box right there. Um, at the very top, you'll see the ultimate VA um, money-making task list. And then right below that, you'll see a place where you can put your email address. I send out emails typically twice a week. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a newsletter called The Buzz that goes out every Monday. It's really right to the point um, newsletter about something that's helpful, hopefully, in your VA business. And then there's also... Um, a schedule for what's coming up in the group that week. And then on Sunday, you'll get another email about nine o'clock on Sunday night. And it talks about everything that happened in the group with the links to the replay. So you can, uh, you know, see both sides of what's going on. All right. Well, I think we're going to stop for, for now. Thank you for coming. Um, thank you for listening. And I would happily answer any questions. So just let me know. And I'll see you in the Facebook group. Have a good day.